are the, the, the result of that game. You know, it doesn't affect who comes in first or second, but there's still that third place. And for those of you guys who aren't, aren't entirely sure oh. how this format works, uh, the third place team will choose any other opponent outside of the top two in order to play the head-to-head -head one versus one $20,000 decider match. So this is pretty fun. And Cloud9 and NIP still both in contention for it, Nip at the forefront of it. So let's see what unfolds here, folks. It's already a man advantage up for Cloud9. It's uh, going to be turned back. Skadoodle popped, and Rush then falls next. So get right and Rez have gotten themselves this opportunity, and they've gotten themselves inside the A site, but everybody's just inside the smoke, touching tips. Finally, they are able to get some headshots, and it does fall just to, to get right. He's going to try to retreat, get over towards Tetris, and he does so with some damage. The defuse looks good. No chance they stop it. That's it. 3v1. Cloud9 win the round. Didn't seem like they were going to. Smokes look good. They got on the site. They actually got on the other side of the smokes from Cloud9, from NIP, even though NIP started in the site. I don't know exactly how that happened. There was a lot of smoke shenanigans, a lot of crossing of the swords, a lot of touching the tips. That's happening. You get in close proximity. Things yeah, get out of control. Things happen. It was as... Uh, it was look at that. As smoky as the steam room last night, Launders. Mm -hmm. It was a sauna in there. Just less romantic. Yeah. <laughs> With more death. <laughs> Which can be romantic at it times. It can be, yeah. Morbid, yep. you know. Depends what you're into. Let's see if Golden can hold back what will be the palace push. A couple of grenades to clear the close corners. I will actually like that. I have actually never really seen that in a round like this before. What did he do? They bounced grenades off of the palace It was one wall, of those moments where I stared at the screen. But didn't understand. I was just looking, but I wasn't yeah. watching. So it, it seemed very Astralis-esque from NIP. They banked three frag grenades off of the wall of palace to clear top balcony. Yeah. So you know, sometimes you get like an MP9 player up there, like up in your face. Um, if he was there, he would have been blown to smithereens. But he wasn't there, so they fade away. And the end result, unfortunately for Nip, is that they have zero utility, zero Kevlar, and probably zero chance of even planting this bomb. Do you agree? It's a lot of zeros, but I, I could see your point. It seems unlikely. Unless Automatic is caught in transition because he is changing position. It's going to be very close to these pistol arrows. Him and Flush are looking to lock down the bomb site. Sure enough, one kill comes in. And take note, that's now three. Just thanks to the pistols. Over towards the A site, it's Dennis who gets one. Upgrading into the MP9. And over here towards the site, they're never actually able to plant. But they don't need to plant. They just need to kill Skadoodle. Skadongler dropping the bomb behind the van now knows what's up, but he doesn't know where Dennis is coming in from. He should have an idea, seeing as it was at the A site that Dennis got a kill. Scott sprays for it, and thank God he takes that because it was way too close of a round. He almost died. I mean, there was there was definitely a chance that he could have just got headshot instantly and taken out, and had no idea that Dennis was flanking and. How does that round even come so close? I mean, it yes. was like... So much for the zeros. They used all their... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's zero until it's 100, right? Like, they used all of their utility, and then they, like, dry ran out B. Two players there waiting for them. Everything is known. Should have been an easy wrap-up. Glad I win the rounds. It cost them a lot of money, though. A lot of money. And now, actually, they have the, the worst of the two buys here. Nip coming in early with the AKs. Oh, my goodness. Rush just gets deleted. Dennis whips that crosshair right back, takes his head off the shoulders. 5v3 turned 5v2. A decimation on the A site here in the favor of Cloud9. It leaves Flusha and Golden up. Not the best of hardware to be playing off of, but at least they've dished out damage to now two of the ninjas. Both Get Right and Dennis hanging on to their lives. Get Right down. Dennis next as he sits inside the sandwich. But there you have it. Two additional headshots and Nipper on the board. And last round, Cloud9 lost four players, so wouldn't be surprised they have no money left, and that, that is the case. They are so broke. They are so broke. That's the result of a good force buy, and then in That's nice not a round. Third gun round. I don't like this. This is definitely, in my opinion, not a round that you buy to zero, because, yeah, you just got... You just lost a round after you won two, but you had four die, four die last round, and NIP have... Everything. They didn't lose any players, so they have like a super solid full buy. Like this is a very low percentage chance that you win this round, like extremely low. And then you're gonna save for two rounds, and you're not gonna have enough for a Molotov along with head armor and your rifle. Shadow gives way. Dennis still makes 
the most of his AK. Blasts back, rush immediately. Golden has something to say of his own two okay. headshots. Never mind. Nice stuff. Not the third. Get right gets the best of him by just sneaking down past. And so we do find ourselves back into the even keel. But get right. Well, he's a bit of a slippery fish. And he has gotten himself over towards the ticket booth. I like that. You shoot the wall, you know, try to make it as though Get Right isn't standing right there. <laughs> he was scared, though. I don't think you realize where the... <laughs> I'm taking shots from Ramp, he screams. Until finally he fires off, catching automatic. Now Flushin knows that he's here. Get Right understands as well. So he goes for the spray, continues it to clear corners, and Skadoodle is alone yet again. I don't think he wins this clutch, though, Mohan. He is significantly outnumbered and significantly outgunned. You know what, actually, maybe he gets one kill, because there's a lot of backs turned. There are many backs turned. Oh my god. Oh. Wait, wait, does he have a kit? No. Launders. Wow. It's what at least the backstab. Up grab into the AK. He knows. He anticipates the peak, but it's going to be the 10 second defuse. Get right's going to have to clear it after five. There's the second kill, Skadoodle. No way. It's denied by Rez with a very narrow angle, but cost effective from Ska. Never seen a clutch like that. That would have been one in a million. One in ten trillion. My heart's pounding. One in a quadrillion. What trillion. if he had a kit? If he had a kit, that defuse happens. He won. If he had a kit. Oh. And they forced. But they weren't supposed to come close to winning that round. Not even close. But Golden comes in. These two stupid one digs that are amazing. I said stupid, but they're actually incredible. Stupid in a good way. Yeah. It's not bad to be dumb. It's subjective. Yeah. It's very true, so actually. So there are qualities of a person that are more important. Kindness is more important than intelligence, and everyone should know that. Yep. Empathy. Humor. And smooth brown skin. And gun skin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right, Connor. You are a bad person. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, the effects of their previous buy, folks, is that Cloud9 have to take this one on the chin, and... Again, we talked about having no chances in the previous round. This one goes from slim to none. And yet Nip still reserved, still playing nice and slow. Cat is tough. There are so many ways to die going up Cat, but they've got the window smoked and connector covered as well. Three in the sight, though, at B. Golden here with the Deagle. Staying alive. Automatic getting two USP kills. Whoa. There was a moment there where Rush actually inside the site has the corner too, but no, it's the ninjas to get back on track. Nice effort from Automatic. How do you get two of those? That's not supposed to happen. I feel like that's been the story of this game so far. Bizarre round so far. <laughs> it's been a weird one, but hey, let's get freaky in Istanbul. I am all for it. No further kills here from Cloud9, so it is only the duo of frags from Automatic. You see the corpses there stacked up on Arch. Nip to three, and Cloud9 still feeling the effects of their uh, of their forced economic woes. Obviously, a purchase still in the cards, but uh, we'll see at what shortcomings. Oh my God! They just because it was silence. I mean, if that was a P2K, someone turns around. Yeah, that's a USPS commercial right there. Buy looks fine. Skadoodle, no utility, but at least he has the op single kit. It's low nades, sure enough, but uh, I don't think that punishes you on Mirage as much as other maps. Yeah. It's, it's it's so weird because it's like every map that someone's going to be like, well, you, you know, you could always use a smoke. But I definitely agree. Like, it's not the map where you're like, you use so much utility early on, you can't avoid it for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit, it's a big map where rotations are probably the most important thing. Um, but yeah, they're, they're low on utility, but like passive setups on CD side, for example, require no smokes. Um, like if you have to get away with it, you can almost always end the end the round with a good position and a nice contact engagement to kick things off, and at least you get the five v four without having to use too much. Skadoodle is going to be the man to do that on the A site from ticket booth, firing deep down into the depths of connector. Yesterday we saw a lot of Skadoodle gameplay over on Catwalk on the CT side, and we also saw this Flusha alone towards apps consistently getting adventurous, going for the flanks, sometimes wheeling that double op setup, but obviously the cash doesn't allow for it just yet. Although he could rob an op off of Lecro, who will be probably backstabbed now that they start trickling into the A site. Sure enough, that's a kill easily taken from Flusha. 
4v2 scenario still here to the favor of Cloud9. Trying to lock the T's in, but now they've got a route that they could eject into B with. Oh, I don't know about this. Skadoodle, don't get caught. Off shot doesn't hit its mark, and now he's allowed for the players to cross. That's two kills off of it. How have they managed to get over to this B site? Not only there, let alone, but with a man advantage. They picked up a bunch of frags. They push it onto Rush, who sure enough has already got himself one. A second to take as Dennis inside of the site. And Rush will just creep forward. Dennis going the other way. It's going to come down to aim, and it's Rush that's going to find it. Cloud9 to tie. It comes down to aim, but Rush also just like... Knows. Waits him out. Yeah. Knows he has to be in that segment of the bomb site. Yeah, he picks the left side of the pillar, like a really confident peek right there, and just knew that he was going to peek that side as well. And he just bails Skadoodle out of like a lot of criticism there on that round because like uh, I don't I don't know he didn't know that they were gonna try to go through window to B that was technically the best thing for them to do. The problem is it's hard to say that they knew it. It was just one of the only options they got pushed out into. But B site was empty, so I think Scott all he really had to do was cut them off going into window, so he didn't have to be running up in the first place. And then like he he misses a shot, and I can see why that's confusing. I mean it gets really weird, yeah. but. Oh, I didn't expect Nip to go that way. I thought for sure they'd take underpass to B. But obviously they wanted to go with the express lane. Here's the result of that. This is shaky. Look at the economy effect still on both sides. We've got three SMGs for Cloud9. We've got pistols up for Nip already into the B site. They go. Automatic tries to pull this back. Cannot get that second headshot quick enough. So get right will best him. Four versus three advantage to Nip, but the smoke's still down. So that facilitates the plan. And Cloud9's retake will be prioritizing Marketplace. It is Golden, and it is Rush. And it is Skadoodle still over towards the Catwalk, but he's got an ump, so it's not like that op's going to be good at this distance. A lot of these T's still just within the bomb site itself. I mean, look at Lecro literally standing in the dead corner. Scotting at the first one. Nice teamwork here. They're starting to piece together the retake. That's two frags before finally Nip does something back, but it is only Dennis that gets it done. Single-handed win. As Forrest sat back and relaxed, he knew Dennis had it in the bag. Yeah, what it matters, he comes alive. Nine kills already in this match. Definitely looks solid there in the after plant, and uh, it, was a nice, it was a nice retake attempt. Like, Cloud9 looked really good. They put the right amount of pressure on the pain point, and Dennis, oh, he had to really displace his aim there. Um, yep. Bit of a missed shot, but yeah, a couple of good headshots to clean it up afterwards, even after only having low health. If Skadoodle finishes that kill then, Forrest is alone towards the van, and there's still three CTs coming his way. Yeah. So 16 health, the difference. Dennis, fast flick, quick shot. And obviously it makes the difference as Nip will uh, get back in this lead. Mm -hmm. Good map for uh, both teams. I don't know how new Cloud9 feel about Mirage. But um, again, this is again, uh, uh, this is Falster's really good competition at this tournament in general because um, of Vito's being done so long ago. Actually, this map wasn't decided, correct? So that we don't know if, I don't, we don't know how the Vito's were done. I think the they map... They would have had to do all of the variables and all the possibilities if they... I think the, I think the maps were decided, but the, uh, the location of to which stream they would be on wasn't. So we didn't know which game we were casting, but the map I'm pretty sure was still decided. Maybe I'm entirely wrong. When the video came out of the veto process, I remember there being five rounds. So it would make sense if it was done prior. Okay. Maybe I'm just feeding you all false information. <laughs> Maybe you are, I'm yeah. a false prophet. I'm kind of eating it up at this point. You seem confident, so... Uh, but that's okay. Either way, it just so happens to be a good map for both teams. So... Now we've got NIP who are posted up at mid. It's one of the slower rounds that we've seen so far. They've only now started to smoke window, moved into these kind of more tricky choke points, connector. And cat. But it is, for the most part, an eco. I think Cloud9 have forced up into this, actually, so they've invested quite a lot. It's not the first time so far this half. Yeah. Really yeah. trying to... First time was definitely unwarranted, so this is interesting. Oh, man. Rush thinking maybe he gets the best of Dennis, but Dennis is on point right now. Individually speaking, he has not been doing the best as of late, and he even recognized it himself, saying that, you know, he'll sacrifice statistics for uh, team improvements. But now he is doing the work and winning. Golden and Scott, two versus four, as Bomb goes down on B. 
Golden actually gets into the bomb site and he catches Rez completely off guard. There's the second kill from Golden and the other two T's, well, they're going to be cat caught in catwalk. If only the bomb wasn't planted for them. Obviously a part of the equation. <laughs> Let's see if Golden can line up some headshots, though. <laughs> they tried to do a boost and fail, and now they have to check. And the other player is actually quite low, but Dennis, he's coming in clutch, man. Super hot. Knowing that he was so low, had to do something weird. Then that was that was definitely time so that he could catch someone as they were trying to defuse. Yep. To whether or not they were going to fake while and, they were looking down. Yeah. Anticipating that the bomb would be tapped again, and catching him in the process. Hell, he even Solid. plucks him from the sky. Solid play. Dennis on point, looking like Zantares. At the current moment. Uh, actually, I can see his face from his monitor, so... Yeah, yeah, that's true. You don't just see the back of his head. Yeah. Estimated five centimeters, right? That was the distance. <laughs> yeah, that's a great... Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Someone get the tape measurer. Whoa. Here comes the pistols. Automatic gets one from... Oh, <gasps> smoke kill! <laughs> get right, got a smoke kill! World first. Blast first smoke kill. I can't wait for the replay. Obviously, in a round that's not supposed to be exciting, that is exhilarating. I how excited you got. <laughs> I just, I saw it on the kill that fired feed. fired me up. I think that's the first time I've ever, uh, I've ever been in a game when one happens. Oh my gosh. I can, I can retire. Well, I'm done here. Find uh, a new partner. I still need you for like a couple more. But, yeah. You actually signed a contract. I don't think you realized yeah. it. Oh, damn. Let's see if Flusher can get out of dodge with a little fruit for his labor. Doesn't look like they're going to chase. Obviously, Cloud9 in this kind of a round when it is just USPs, you, you've already lost some costs, so uh, don't throw away your last two. You're going to have to make that your sub sound. Smoke kill! Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who subs to me? Well, maybe now <laughs> people will be encouraged. Let's get that on a soundboard. Smoke kill! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doubling up his nip, 6-3 now their lead. Flusha again saves one AK. That's going to facilitate this next buy. But, of course, it is still favored towards the ninjas. Full control. Oh, do we get to see how it happened? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> A bounced smoke kill. Oh, my gosh. Even better. A ricochet smoke kill. And, obviously, Skadoodle had no... Oh, well, we don't know if this is live or not. No, that's that his been, reaction. It was, He's yeah. He's just dead inside. That's... <laughs> And I don't blame him at this point. I mean, emotionally drained it. Yeah, like look, it happens, and and now he's just gone. I this is this li this round is not live because Skadoodle needs time to process okay. it. Okay, fair enough. So he didn't even realize maybe. Go for it. Don't go for it. Don't do it, Rez. Don't do this. I wonder, is it is it like informal rules? Like, is it just like a like a you know a code of conduct that they'll that just say this round's canceled and then yeah. people just do whatever they want. Because I remember, I can't remember which event it was, but I do believe it was a major where uh, it was a tech pause and uh, the casters didn't know yet. But then Elige, who was like the fourth man into a, an A-site execute or whatever or not, just kills his whole team. Just starts shooting them in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. And everybody's, you know, left wondering what's going on. Yeah, we still don't know how psychopaths are born, so... <laughs> but we know they do play Counter-Strike. That's true. They must. Just like in anything else. It's those Vidya games. <laughs> Don't feel the flames, <laughs> Connor. Don't do this. It's a fun game for friends. This is where we met each other. Through Counter-Strike. That's true. That's super true. We have friends that we've only met in countries that we weren't born in. Yeah. Yeah, it's, very, it's incredibly true. It's sick, man. It's incredibly rare as well, right? How privileged we are. Thanks, Valve. Thanks, Valve. Yeah, not everybody can thank Valve, but we sure have a reason to. Yeah, everyone could thank Valve. I think at one point in history, if they've ever played games, oh. probably right. No, I'm grateful. Whether they like the single-player experience of Half-Life or any of the other multiplayer games that they made. Do you want to be disappointed in me? Yeah, you've never played Half-Life or watched Star Wars. I know. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> when you've been found out. I actually just guessed on both those things, but I was so sure. Damn. I've seen The Lord of the Rings. I've never watched Star Wars either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least, okay, thanks. I appreciate you syncing with me. Uh, I do, I do. That's what real partners are it's about. It's too nerdy for me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I stick to Counter-Strike. 
126 ADR, Dennis. Dennis Beast. That is big. Obviously just waiting for a player to join back. We're not forcing Nip to play with a handicap here. They will be 5v5. As it should be. Scary to think, of course, that uh, this T-side could really start running away. The the two of the three rounds that Cloud9 picked up is obviously their, their pistol round, which was not that convincing. It was, a, I believe, a 2v2 fashion. Um, then the round two force by that barely, barely left them with another win, right? Only Skadoodle is able to win that situation. So so Cloud9 have had one, one convincing round, and that was the pistol, which was, again, a little shaky. Yeah. This has been, th there's, there's a very real possibility that Nipper's sitting here in a 9-0. Right, oh, on an alternate timeline. That's true. Yeah. Oh, uh, there and their their T side is really good on Mirage. In general, it's nice that Dennis is just like fragging out and making cool, interesting decisions. And he used to like I don't know how to say he used to be so good, but like he was a star player of LGB when they were getting top four at majors as like this like super underdog team. Uh, and you know they they all split up and then Olaf's on phase and um, Macaulay well. I don't know what he's red reserve or was for Not a bit. Not even. I don't know sure. what Michael Lowe's He was to. Exum. Or is Exum the same? I don't even remember. One of them changed their names. But Dennis was the, like the best player on that team. I mean, Olaf was like the next probably and at times showed signs and whatever. But uh, yeah. I mean, even just Dennis and Fnatic. I think during that stint as well, he was uh, one of the incredible players on that team. Pretty right? damn good. He, uh, he he reinvigorated the lineup again. We we say this right, like it's 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 Dennis who's taking the hit statistically speaking on an individual level. He has been he has been not up to the standard he initially set, but he even himself has recognized the fact that their results are improving, and he just straight away sees that as, as being even better. Yeah. Right. So it's like, is Dennis going to become one of those players that that sacrifices a bit in order to ensure victory? Because those guys are valuable. Some would say invaluable. Yeah. I actually don't know what that word means anymore because like, it's like, this is invaluable. It's like, that means it's so valuable <laughs> that you can't value it. Yeah. That's what it means, right? Essentially. Is it the same as saying it's very valuable? I think you're right. Which one is more severe? Invaluable. Because you change the word. Okay. Is there a word that is... Okay. I'm going to concede on this any right now. I think that makes sense to me now. Working through it? I'm, yeah, I'm figuring it out. For those of you who can't see Launder's eyes at the moment, I can see him crunching it. Hey, it's Messioso. You mean Don Hatchie? <laughs> <laughs> In the flesh. Uh, we don't know. People don't like us, so we're not sure exactly what's happening, but I don't really care. I like to hang out with you. What's Rez looking at? Does it smell like Updog in here? What's Updog? Nothing much. What's up with you? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> you get me with those all the time, but you found a P you found like a PG-13 one. <laughs> yeah, I found a stream-friendly one. Damn. Wow, making strides. And I'm still just spinning in the dirt. <laughs> Plowing the snow. Yeah, rural Quebec. You're not making fun of my home, are you? No, I like it. Okay. That's where I was born, so. Good. No, I know you, you constantly remind me. <laughs> so for some reason, I have to, so. Looks like we're back in. We've got all 10 players, and while uh, there is a lot of them unequipped here for Cloud9, it is still going to be the closest thing to fair. A nefarious affair. What will NIP's setup be? I think economic decisions have been a real, like, big reason why Cloud9 haven't even had good rounds to show in this match. Like, Strange Force by on the second or third round, and then um, another one recently. Don't know if it, the other one was justified, though, so I won't call them out on that. Interesting to see these smokes used against each other. It's so powerful now that CTs have this option to smoke top mid, but it really de does depend on spawn uh, as to whether or not a, uh, a terrorist will come through it. Fake exec. Lured three people in here. No T's ready to execute. 
Is the spacing good enough? Ah, oh, Dennis getting a very important kill, however. Yeah, get right caught. Not expecting a second in the form of Golden. So now he could slow this down long enough for the rotation to come back into the A site. If he does that, then the fake towards B looks so superb. But he will eventually die. Sure enough, Dennis takes him. Still leaves us in a 3v3 scenario where Flusha can catch one off guard. And this is now an unexpected peak from Automatic. So things going well for Cloud9. The fake at the B site does pull rotators, but they didn't make enough progress on the A site during that window of opportunity. Dennis should never be able to win this. 14 health, no bullets, he's dead. Yeah, he's hidden everything, but yeah, no, shouldn't be able to win that, of course. That's actually my favorite kind of strat where you throw a, a very simple fake throw a couple of smokes, one flash or something, and then you have one player commit to it with the, the smokes that are good enough to make it seem like there's more. And then you use that to pull off a really good split where you try to catch a rotation early on, you try to get info as quick as possible. But here, Rez dies kind of early, and I'm not sure if it, he should have spent more time in the halls, first of all, or if the strat meant that he needed to get out that, that soon. But it felt like they weren't prepared at A-Ramp to to get anything done. And Dennis also, I think he just really outskilled Rush, but that's typically a, a fight that Rush like knocks out every single time. So yep. some pieces missing from the puzzle for Nips. Oh, nearly gets a second chance, but Forrest will cut him down just short of that attempt. I was going to say last round as well. It looked like Get Right wasn't prepared for there to be a golden inside the bomb site, Whoa. but OK, let's shoot through smoke and catch the feet of Flusha. Torn apart at the kneecaps. Golden's still contesting mid. He's got support just behind him. They know somebody's up by chair. And if Forrest gets out of here, then that's all right. But he needs to be this anchor because he's supposed to be controlling middle for the after plant. And now Dennis, despite having planted that bomb, still sits on 37 HP. Get right with an ump in market. This is going to be a three-pronged assault. One market, one cat, and one apps. but it's delayed, Launders. Yeah, what are they doing, actually? They're holding off for so long. Bomb's almost halfway down. They haven't moved in quite yet. It's 2v3, they're clearly gonna go for this, but they've just waited so long. Yeah, they have two kits, one of which is on Golden. Okay, the kill's coming fast enough, but man, were they ever playing with time? Holy smokes. Way too dangerous. Like, this is gonna come within a second of blowing up, and, and they had no reason to slow down there, I don't think. I, I think they must have had a... They must have thought, like, for sure someone was in halls. So I think whoever was in halls was like, wait for a second, wait for a second. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it yeah, they, it just seemed like they were just waiting. But since what, we can see everything, it always yeah, looks kind of dumb. What's important is, of course, that they get those two duels. I mean, like, even if the nip... Say, say ninjas are doubled up inside of Marketplace, I feel like uh, I feel like Golden maybe only gets one kill. Uh -huh. Then you've got to go deal with that player. How do you get him out of there? In that case, there's no time. If those kills didn't come as fast as they did, there's no time for the defuse. So mm. they played it right. They played it cautious, and it still worked out. It would have been uh, more easily criticizable had they failed to do so. These deep hall smokes are also really good. It's nice to see the top mid smoke from the CTs coming out and also the deep B smokes coming out more often. Um, obviously, the top mid smoke wasn't really possible. It was extremely hard to throw, and you had to be a running throw, but now they've made it so that it's a lot easier. But this deep three one is extremely powerful. You don't have to be there. You don't have to expose yourself to throw it. You can throw it nice and early, so it's always consistent. And you have line of sight all the way down B on a site that you would like very often play only one person on in the first place. So it's good for a common strategy. Limits the options for NIP. Now they're forced to turn their attention to mid. Whoop, doesn't finish up the first kill, but does still re-peek into the second. Now Rez catches his teammate, being rushed now down. Golden 7 health, and he's still lingering here. Obviously, he's confident he's got the advantage of a gun, but his life could very easily be taken away. Dennis now gets the back of automatic, just splashes his head over towards Catwalk. And this 2v3 looks scary for Cloud9. That was not an easy one dig to hit. Dennis just has to do another. Oh, don't do it. He's weighing his options. No. Uh, M4 flash uh, uh, gets the gun, prioritizes <laughs> the hardware. They don't have a smoke for themselves, but no one's testing the cross. And that was the CT smoke. Flusher just put this down himself, so he actually just gave them the utility, I believe, to make this happen. I guess they have a... Oh, he's pushed through it. Okay. That's an easy one, then. Lines him up. Only knocks down the first. Now there's no time to plant, and Dennis needs to die or make sure he stays alive. 
So I guess we found out what Flesh's plan was if they were to go A. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I see it, right? The smoke grenade could be either indicative of him falling back, which would allow for them to take uh, Connector, but oh. also it kind of forces them into Connector as well. Yeah, it forces them into Connector, and they're like, well, okay, if he wants to do that, I go, I go to A, and Flesh is like, well, now we have 10 seconds left, so I know you can't go B, so let me just time this right. This guy's got a big brain. Yep. Flusha. So. Very simple default. No top mid smoke from the CTs. And Skadoodle has everything blocked off from him. And there are so many smokes down, but the terrorists still have three. Which is a pretty decent... This is... The, the most uh, typical kind of mid default that you'll ever see. Window smoke coming out. We'll be up, you know, until like a minute seven. They want to make a move on connector. Otherwise, they don't have any map control for show for all this utility they've used. Oh, Skadoodle sees the tracers from both of those guns. You can see him trying to choose whether or not he wanted to blind shoot through smoke or wait for that cat peek. He waits and almost loses his life for it. Dropped to 35. So he's been convinced to fall off, play within the jungle, and he'll still have a line of sight towards Catwalk. They're walking into it right now, in fact, and yep, there you have it. Picks up his kill, ejects towards CT spawn. Now a more passive angle he can hold. The T's still set on this B site split. Good timing on that Molotov. Just barely misses the fading smoke. Buys a few more seconds for him to change position. Now he's going to be just beneath the window. Flash goes past, does not blind him whatsoever, but he's just executed from behind. Dennis, to the back of the skull, lands the headshot. Forrest will take up the next one, and while Bomb's been thrown out into the open, it's now in the control of Golden. He cannot further punish, though. And so, man advantage for Nip. Bomb down, Flash is great. Nicely done by Golden here, but now they've seen both CTs. Golden single-handedly making this retake happen, but Rez denies them both. You want headshots, he's got them. Nip with seven. Nasty. That, that, was, that was nasty from Rez. Like, he just handled that, and Golden just waits no time at all. Like, he went out. I mean, his teammate was there, right there with him, but, uh, man, if you give him a second, he will set up that Flash and start that retake. He likes to get ahead of things before people get comfortable. I definitely see the appeal. But, oh my god, that was just pre-fire. That was just pre-fire, and Skadoodle ran right into it. Quite unfortunate. I, um, but there's a silver lining. I mean, he had like 14 HP, so maybe he would have died no matter what. Oh yeah, you gotta hold that spray down and believe. Classic get right. Yeah, no, he said it. He said at a certain point, like, if the spray's not working out well, well, it's too late, you already did it, so just believe and hold down. Notice he didn't get the kill. Rez got it. <laughs> he still believed, he did his part, right? He just still believed and held down. Believe until the end. Oh, ooh, Flusha sees some feet. Problem with this, of course, is the scout needs to be the headshot. Oh. He misses. Oh! The oh. second one's all right. Yeah, hit the harder one, why not? There's already been damage dealt to two other of the ninjas, actually. Look at the HP here. This, this is like prime real estate for two scouts to still be alive on Cloud9. There's a frag grenade in the mix as well. Smoke's about to go up at mid. Bomb's about to get retrieved, but Automatic's got a chance to peek. If he hits that shot, get right's dead. Again, second follow-up's good enough. Automatic cleared out from Forest and Flusha. Has actually managed to cut this down into the 1v1. And Lecro, he doesn't have the bomb. He's got 40 seconds to get it. Uh, Flusha seems to... Oh, he's so good. Y he knows. Like, I... So now he's going to gamble on where Lecro's going to take the bomb instead of trying to protect that himself because Lecro has to spend a certain amount of time clearing angles he might be in. So here he's going to assume Lecro's not going to want to go back up Cat and he's just right about it. So actually just going to fall right back into his lap and Flusha uh, will catch him here. Oh, he's... Ooh. Is Lecro going to make his way in? <gasps> oh my god. He went two levels deep. That's pretty good. I like that. Obviously, Flusha just playing, waiting. That so instead of going cat to B, he went back up into A through jungle, through the window. And now he's inside of Marketplace waiting for Flusha, who just walked in. Beautiful clutch from Lecro. Bailing Nip out of a very tricky situation. That was pistols and two scouts from Cloud9, and it almost worked out. That was a very smart play. Oh, my gosh. He didn't have any idea where, uh, where Flusha went. So he didn't no know Flusha was gambling or playing yeah. middle of the map or protecting the bomb. 
but he made the exact right read. This shot right there. Whoa! <laughs> Flush almost wins this round, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two sides to every story. And there's two CTs in the bottom of mid. Forrest clears them both immediately. This was another double scout pistol round here from Cloud9. Obviously, it's the 15th, so they're going to invest everything they can. And that's all they were able to afford. I feel like even though Cloud9 have six rounds, we've been seeing them economically struggle over and over. So many four spies in this game from them. Mm -hmm. That has been the tail of the tape. Yes, why not close it out the way you started? That's not going to work. Rush down, and so is automatic. Rez will be the nail in the coffin here for the T side of NIP. Nine rounds for them, six for Cloud9's defense. Remember, that's six, including their pistol win. Yeah, I feel like both, for both these teams, they had have had variable success in this tournament so far. And even though they're going to be unable to get to the final, I feel like they are like there's there's a lot for them to take seriously. The fact yeah. that they're doing this in front of so many people. I mean, they're not tired today. You know, they only played a couple of maps like there's there's a lot of reasons why they were gonna want, like want to really really try to win this game i could totally see them like taking it extremely seriously and it does feel like they're they're both teams are playing well of course again both these teams still in uh, in the race for third place like the way that uh, uh sorry the way that cloud nine were tweeting about like their past games like even if they won they're like wow that game was a lot like astralis where they only got seven rounds they're like yeah that game was actually a lot closer than it seemed we kind of blew it in the second half but I feel like we're getting better. Like those are actually, you know, great tweets to read where yeah. you feel like they're thinking more about the progress, overall progress of the team as opposed to just like the outcome that just happened. Take it in strides. Yeah, and NIP have also, they've just, I think they've impressed at this tournament too, like almost beating Astral is just like 11 rounds, but that game was on a razor's edge as well. Yep. Incredibly true. Zero utility, zero anything other than Kevlar here from Nip. Everybody's protected. We'll see if this Cloud9 split into the A site is able to get much done. There's three CTs in position, one of which just gets blindsided by Flusha. Nobody watching for that palace peak. But Rez is beneath, and so he'll get a headshot of his own. Get right should have traded Flusha when he fell, but Flusha's found a little space, and Nip find themselves in a 2v2. Cloud9 have made something of this round despite the initial struggles, and they've decided to take that bomb back the other way. Yeah, and this is where you tether. You've got one player middle of the map, and you know that he's going to have a certain amount of information on what he can hear in terms of rotations, and also can stop rotators if they come right to him. And now they're going to be able to meet up as soon as they cross paths with Golden Walk the entire way through underpass. They could just play the 2v2 in the B site. They got a big flank, though, for the CTs. Pretty good positions. They're, like, Forest is not that late. I was going to say, I don't think Forest's proximity will be expected. Get right, still wary of that potential A play, but now that he hears bomb down on B, he'll have confirmation. Probably waits for Forrest to get into position before he commits to his duel as well, and that's what it is. Two separate engagements going down at the same time, and Forrest has gotten the best of the, the man in apps. Now Golden spotted. He decides to change position. Doesn't want Forrest to get all too close, and he's missed the initial shots on both these players. He cannot find either kill. He's getting low on ammunition. Three shots left over here, but it only takes two, and he can't get anything done. Down he goes. Nip with a tenth. For They'll it, find the retake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ten seconds on the defuse. I mean, if he was able to delay any longer. But the thing is, I think he really pushed that in the first place. So, oh, my gosh. It does come down to the wire. Yeah. But, man, I, Golden had it. I, I, for the record, I love how he played the pillars. Yeah. You no, know? it was good movement. It was just those, those headshots. They couldn't connect. Yeah. And that is the second part of the battle, of course. Just as important as the first. But in the objective ga base game, if you can delay... That can pay off, but here's a couple of clean headshots from Dennis. Start that pistol off nicely. That was an important duel as well in the retake. Forrest dies, it's all on get right. He's got to try and fight his way out of market. Golden could have done the exact same thing and just fallen back towards bench. The artillery barrage nearly blowing Dennis to smithereens, but he comes back in for the repeat as the T's take connector. They are being filtered into get right, who will eventually die, but that's been the story for all of Cloud9, other than Flusha. Last man up. No guns yet to be retrieved. Oh. Kind of story of the match for Cloud9 uh, when they, they face the Strawless. Well, hopefully it's not. But the fact that uh, it, it was a very competitive first half, and then in the second, the other team kind of just ran away with it. 
We'll see if that's the case. Who knows? There will be a, a real chance for them to show for themselves here, even though this is kind of a bonus round for NIP. They've, as you can see, they've got a couple of SMGs. And obviously the reason that teams do this is just because, you know, if they, have a, they don't need to upgrade since those guns are still good and they get so much more money for the kills. Whoa. Settle down, Forrest. This is a gun round. And he just goes charging it up into underpass, finds Flush's head through wood. Holding it down for all the silence F4 users out there. Yeah. Making it look easy. He didn't have any support to get back out of underpass. What was the final play there? Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. Good call. Now Skadoodle actually gets the kill from the Galil off of Palace. That was a Palace to jungle frag. Get right loses his teammate just next to him, and Ska doing significant damage with that gun. Bombs yet to be able to cross. Doesn't want to get caught off by either a peek from jungle or cat. Strong spots for both teams. It's just we've got... I think it's... It's Lecro. this res play. Makes me curious over towards ramp. Mm. Yeah, Lekro is just so far away is the thing. Oh, in the open. Bomb does... Gets, gets taken down. And they've got to come back and help him out. Luckily for Cloud9, they've got lots of time left over. Whoa. I don't know about that repeat. Standing on the full display, I mean, the thing with that one kill is that even though Lekro was so far away, that one kill from Rez is what allows for Lekro to have enough time to get in. And he grabbed the AK in the process. They're still very wary of this, this last player. They have no clue where he is at all. Luckily, they cover both of the potential peaks. Now, there is a player isolated on the bomb site. There's two, in fact. Lekro has the utility still on him. It doesn't hit that first headshot and takes all the damage in return. So now his life will be cut short in just a matter of time. There was a chance here for NIP, but Cloud9 will get a seventh. Excellently done on their behalf. That, to me, is all skadoodle. Skewering the A-site players as they tried to change positions. Mm -hmm. Ska allowed for the bomb to come over. Yeah, absolutely. Did a great job of connector. And ultimately, it got a little, little hairy at the end, but they, they brought it back. And now Cloud9 win a round. It's their seventh. They're still quite a ways behind uh, NIP. NIP still comfortably in the lead right now but um, but uh, I don't know I don't know if that tells us anything as to whether or not Cloud9 will get back into this match winning this two in a row though might turn some heads might change some minds so let's see what they have for us now it's interesting because even though they that was kind of a bonus round for NIP and they only had the two SMGs get right just went ahead and bought another MP9 because he was kind of low now everyone's almost down to zero so Cloud9 might be able to have an eco to go up against next round. But that's a bridge they'll cross when they get there. NIP are a slightly stronger in terms of firepower right now than they were last round. What's the setup? Initial mid default. And again, what we pay attention to here is just how many nades are getting used at what times. Like who's left with what map control after all the dust settles. Mid's going to be very important this round. It's going to all culminate in the next few seconds. There's the peak from Forrest from on top of the box. Gives him a much better angle downwards. Rush blinded by the smoke. Tries to get up close, and Rez will deny him any further entry. 5v3. Solid defense coming out of Nip. And the duel's just not going their way at all. Cloud9 have been gunned down to only two players left. Luckily, one is Flusha. Unfortunately, the other's Ska. Damn, very savage. Oh, he just doesn't have an op at the moment. I don't think he's going to be able to crack open bomb sites, Launders. He did on the last round. You highlighted how good he was. <laughs> you said he skewered the site, is what you said. Yeah, I, I you literally... Like, oh, Ska skewered <laughs> the A site. <laughs> oh, you're a real ass. Talking out of both sides of your mouth right now, Connor. Do you yeah. love Ska or do you not? I'm conflicted. It's a love-hate relationship. It's a respectful relationship, however. And flush up. Not respected much there as he's traded out instantly. So four players up for Nip. Five rounds the difference. Yeah, that was definitely a lot more clean. And I, I'm wondering about that, that that silence M4 because when he killed when he killed automatic from the window, I think it was automatic, and then Rush was right there in the smoke at connector. 
he didn't like Rush didn't seem worried about window anymore, even though Forrest could have like re-peaked and killed him as well. So I wonder how much like the silence bullets coalesced with maybe a na some nade noise at the top connector and actually took a tent like it was un they were unable to tell where the bullets are coming from. I mean, we know that the bullets are meant to be hard to hear, but still, you're usually able to triangulate, pinpoint the direction it's coming from. Ooh, Molotov extinguished by the smoke. Let's see if that has much effect on the play. Could allow for Cloud9 to go smashing through the smoke, and they do. CZ's in hand, Rez meets them on the other side. And Get Right changing position here is gonna be overwhelmed after just getting himself one kill. These pistols doing work, enough work to at least get this into even ground. But there is a long flank coming out here from Forest. Lecro dueling through smoke finds kills. Rush, what are you made of? That was a great smoke. A lot of people play on the 1v2s just to make it seem like they could cross a triple or, in this case, not move at all. And Rush is moving a little bit far enough out. Just enough to get the M4. Whoa. Oof. Forrest definitely giving him a chance there. Yeah. Obviously, you saw Rush almost paralyzed with his lack of information. Didn't know what to expect. Was given a chance by Forrest, but then he lost his life regardless. Yeah, I think he did delayed on grabbing the gun just because the whole point of the smoke is to make it seem like he could have crossed, but if that gun just suddenly disappears off the floor, I mean, then you then you know that they're still on default, but at that point, the flank has come in, and NMP move away with another round. Great, 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 great round for Lecro, who actually only has seven... What? Is it because he re... No, he's a 13 deaths. He literally won like one of the smartest 1v1s you've ever seen, and then had like this great round just now. See, it's, it's what Bardolph always tells me. It, it's the impact frags. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's his excuse. If James can do it, then so can Lecro. Three, four, frags, five. So quick. <laughs> All in unison there as Cloud9. I mean, that, that to me just, just reeks of desperation. Mm -hmm. You run out middle, you don't see anything window, so you run up connector, and then you all die. Yeah, maybe just in the get it done mode. Um, at this point, even though there was a lot of like a uh, lot of cool decisions that we've seen from each of the players in this game, it's actually like a, a high frequency. Like I remember, like we were talking about the Flusha smoke that we saw on Cat, like a one v one between him and Flusha. Some cool stuff that's happened in this match. Dennis's decision making with that fake defuse. Full of cool. I like that this time when we see this underpass play from Forrest, he has the support because we just talked about last time how he had no escape plan. Mm -hmm. There was no second step in the execution. And what makes this all the cooler is the fact that, you know, it's gone unspotted. Flusha blindsided by Forrest's return and Lecro's still at the bottom of underpass. So if these top mid players think that maybe they have some footing to work with, seeing as the underpass player went B, they'd be wrong. But they are still able to get a kill. And Connector has been a bit of a struggle because these corners are always occupied. Dennis gets just blasted back by Get Right Lee's automatic 1v2. And the trajectory of the grenade is going to tell automatic exactly where Christopher's at. Over there behind the Tetris. Nobody has control of the bomb at the moment, Launders. Yeah, do they have vision on it? It looks like they're... They might now. Okay. Appears on radar. Forrest is is really roaming. Okay, so I guess you know they're obviously going to think about how to hold this the best way possible. Now they've lost automatic, but time has passed. He could be anywhere. There's two incendiary grenades here for Nip. They could literally just firebomb it, mm. but it looks like they're going to let automatic get his paws on it. And he gets the headshot. Now things get really interesting because he's going to head to the B site. No. Doubles back and get right caught in the open. Now it's confirmed, but 18 seconds he could... He'll make the run. He's not going to. He's going to try to continue this duel. Now the fire blocks him from entering into A without oh. losing half his health. The time. Get Right's going to play the time for the win unless Automatic somehow gets this in or oh gets the kill. He's going to try to get this bomb plant. Actually manages it somehow. Get Right goes high. Automatic goes back. And Cloud9 goes up. One round more. Eight for them. And they're still fighting for this map. Oh my god. What a round. You know, I was worried that with the two-on-one, maybe there could have been a better way to play that between NIP and and uh, Get Right, but they clearly wanted to find out where Automatic went in the first place. But Automatic, maybe he could have made it back with 18 seconds, but he definitely didn't, obviously didn't feel like it. He thought about yeah. it, and he's like, I don't know. So he wanted to go in. He also had the Molotov to use, to use it to block Get Right out of his position. If Get Right had jumped up on the box, he could have gone ticket right away. But uh, this round might get started really quickly, so... 
Let's pay attention to what happens here as Rez starts things off with the M4 kill. Yeah, Nip have the kind of scoreline right now that's just going to allow for them to duke it out. But Skadoodle and Automatic combining for two important kills because they catch that forefront on the A site. Nip had gotten aggressive. They wanted to try and set a precedent, set a pace. And instead, they end up losing a couple faces. Dennis, the last two. That is Nip confirming 15. That's nasty. Dennis up to 26 already. He's feeling a little bit better. His headshot game has been so nice now on this map. Not to mention Forest 25. Right, yeah. Kind of sucks that tournament life is over at this point. But uh, it's still, I think, really good for them to be playing well and to doing it in, like, at least relatively high-pressure situations. So Cloud 97 just to tie it up. And even after that past hero heroic recovery in the 1v2 from Automatic, they lose the following, and now they're broke. Scout, one of two guns already tagged to 25. Looks like we could have a fight in middle, and sure enough, that's where the first casualty is found. A second quickly thereafter. Golden wielding the only weapon here for Cloud9, and he has done a good job of at least opening up this A site. Check your radars, folks. There is nobody left here other than Dennis and Connector, and the rotation towards CT spawn is going to be pretty long. It's Lecro heading over, a liability as he sits to 24 health. But the utility game's not strong. There is no smoke to get this crossover. They could try to plant safe, and all that does is exposes you to CT. Again, where nobody is. So this is at least a retake. Nip looking to end the game in an attempt to come back on this one. Bomb has been planted. Two kits, two smokes, three flashbangs. The utility's certainly there. They know that they have only two players to deal with, but do they anticipate one being in the site? Because Rush has actually gotten closer. Now, he's not well equipped for the job, but if there's a little disjointedness in the attempt here from NIP, then things could look good, but Dennis looks all the better. Last two frags are his, and so it should be. Nearly 30 frags for him as the Ninjas pick up another win. Cloud9 empty-handed as this one comes to a close.